Hey guys, on today's show, I got something in the mail just a couple minutes ago, and we're gonna unbox and unpackage it. It's the Comet GP9. This is a VHF, uh, VHF UHF dual band antenna, and we're gonna get this big SOB out of the bag, set it up, and I'm gonna show you a couple more cool things. That's right here, right now on Ham Radio for non-techies. Hey guys, welcome back to Ham Radio for non techers where we try to simplify the ham radio hobby to get you to study for and pass your test, get you on the air as quickly as possible. Like I said before, today we're going to be building the Comet GP9 dual band, uh, dual band antenna. This is a VHF UHF antenna, and this thing is about, uh, oh, when fully assembled, it's 17 feet tall. So we're going to do a couple things to this thing to hide it from my HOA. Um, my HOA is not particularly nosy. They kind of know better than to screw with me. Uh, but just in case, I don't want to send up a big white flag, a 17-foot tall white flag, that is, uh, advertising that this thing is now un in operation. So we're going to use a series of camouflage paints that I got from Lowe's and Home Depot. And we're going to camouflage this thing. We're going to take some uh, electrical, electrical tape and coax wrap and wrap up and seal all the connections so everything on this thing is absolutely watertight. And I also picked up some uh, dielectric grease to help uh, protect the connections that I'm going to make when we, when we assemble the antenna. So we're going to get this thing built up. And what happened is, when I was researching and, and, and looking to buy one of these things, all the videos for this antenna are either super old or they weren't shot all that great. I wanted to see a size comparison. I mean, I, I can go out and measure 16.9 feet, okay? I can, I can figure that part out. I didn't want to. <laughs> I wanted to see somebody who had this thing assembled going, hey, look at this big antenna. So we're gonna do that here. I'm gonna show you the size of this thing when it, when it gets done. We're gonna get some close-up ideas on how I'm gonna do the camouflage paint on it. I'm gonna show you all the things I did not find in the videos when I was researching this antenna. Now, the reason I got this antenna is that I do a lot of simplex work with my local club, and I have a Diamond X30 up on the roof that you guys have seen. If you've been watching my videos for a while, I've got this little VHF, UHF antenna up there, this little Diamond X30, and it's cool. It's a great antenna, but it only has 3.5 dB gain on it. This one has almost 9 dB gain, so I should be able to reach a whole lot further when we're doing our propagation tests, and that was the whole reason for purchasing this. In addition to this video about the antenna, I'm also going to unveil a radio that I'm currently using. This is a uh, Yaesu 2960. It's a, it's a single band. It is a VHF radio. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm stupid here today. Uh, it's a VHF radio, and the cool thing about it is it's super simple to set up. It runs on 80 watts, and it runs... Uh, the price the price point on it is $169 currently. So those three criteria really speak to me. So I'm going to show you guys that as well when we go into the testing phase of this antenna. Uh, luckily, or well, I'm going to see about doing some simplex work beforehand we do the testing part because the repeater is less than three miles from my house. So it's going to pick up that, that repeater over there super quick. Uh, but I really want to test it out with somebody across town that's on simplex and see what kind of a uh, what kind of improvement or performance I get out of it from there. So we're going to jump right into it, get this thing unbagged, get it unboxed, take a look at it, get it assembled, show you all the cool little tips and tricks in case you want one, and I'll let you know what I think of it when we get it built. Okay, so first things first, we got three sections here that go all the way down to the other end, and each of these sections has a coupler on one on one end that the wire from the previous section will go into and screws go in to hold that piece down. The problem is the sections here, that's way, way inside of the uh, tubing. So I'm going to take a pair of pliers and pull that out a little bit. And on this side, actually I think, well, yeah, okay. So I'm going to do it on this side and I'm going to get this, uh, this middle section here. I'm going to pull that one out as well and tie a string around it. So when I get the other section down here done, when it comes time to pull in this section, which is way, you can look in there, it's way back in there, I gotta get that to come down to where I am. So we're gonna get that all pulled out and taken care of. I wanna take a pair of pliers, 
and I want to grab onto this thing ever so delicately and pull. So that's all taken care of. And then on this side, the middle section, I want to pull that out as well. So we'll get that, we'll get a little pair of pliers on there and gently pull that out. So what I want to do is I want to tie a string onto this section because when I pull it the other way and get the other section out, this is going to recede back in. So I want to get this, get this back out before I connect it to the bottom piece. So we're going to get that set up first. And I just grab some kitchen twine, just some simple kitchen twine. And I'm just going to cut that off. We're going to put that around here. And I'm just going to make a simple little square knot, I suppose. Because I want to be able to get this thing back off. I don't want this stuck inside the antenna forever. There we go. So now I've got this on here. And that's all ready to roll. So when I pull out the other side up at the, up at the top here, Let's bring that out real quick. I have to manage to get this side out now, which is where this connects to. So give me a couple seconds here, we'll get that taken care of. All right, so tapping this section onto the workbench here carefully allowed this to bring out this other piece. So that's the piece we're looking for here. I gotta pull that out a little bit and get that out here. So again, like before, we're gonna grab our pliers. I'm just gonna gently pull that out like so. So now that's exposed and ready to go. So now we're going to attach this section to this section. Okay, so we now have these two parts together here. And we just gotta get one inside of the other. I wanna see how far, what they didn't show me in the other videos that kind of ticked me off was how far down this goes into here. So I wanna see how that seats in. Okay, it looks like it's pretty straightforward. Looks like it goes in about that far. So it's probably about, I don't know, a little over five eighths of an inch. Now you got these two little microscopic little screws here. Um, don't lose those. <laughs> if you're gonna do this, Definitely want to do it on a nice big open section of, uh, of table. A number two Phillips head screwdriver will uh, work out just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and start to thread these a little bit. Actually, you know what? Before I do that, I want to get that grease down in there, that dielectric, that dielectric grease I bought. So what I did is I went over to Lowe's this afternoon. I was trying to buy all my other stuff. And I picked up... This thing called OxGuard, antioxidant compound. It's a, uh, according to what it says here, guards against oxidation, improves conductivity, and produces a cooler connection. And I want to put a little bit of this onto the wire here for this connection. Okay, so with those two sitting there, I'm going to go ahead and tighten these up. And I think we're good there. So now... It comes down to trying to slide all this back together again. So for that, we're just going to get this in there. See how far down we can get it, just like so. And with that being done, we'll go ahead and seal up our connection. So far, it seems to be a pretty easy build. This does have a rubber stopper inside of it. It's supposed to keep it protected, but I don't generally trust that. And a lot of the other guys that did the video, the build videos on these things also felt the same way. So what they were doing is they were wrapping the outside of this with electrical tape and then going over with coax wrap. So I went down to Home D or Lowe's today. And I picked up some of Scotch Super 33 Plus uh, electrical tape. And then as a backup over this, I'm going to wrap this around first, and then I'm going to go over it with the coax wrap, which I picked up from a ham radio outlet. This stuff is absolutely fantastic. It ain't cheap, but it's fantastic. So we're going to get that all put up there and get this whole thing sealed up and ready to go. Now, uh, when applying the tape on here, 
I'm going to uh, overlap it, hopefully by about 50%. I'm going to start down on this side and work my way up. And I believe I'm pretty happy with that. As you can see, I pretty much covered everything. There's no gaps or anything here. I went back over this a little couple times just to make sure. But I think that's, that's I'm pretty happy with that. So next, you're going to be taking the coax wrap and getting that onto here. Now the coax wrap, the coax wrap here is, uh, it's kind of rubber, it's, it's, it's very flexible. So you can actually pull out a piece. I'm going to take a piece, maybe about a foot, maybe a foot and a half. It's probably overkill. Uh, I'll take probably about maybe a foot out. I'll take a foot out, and I'll, I'll uh, wrap that around this thing. So let's see what we can get done here. And it looks pretty good. Nice, solid wrap around. No gaps, absolutely watertight. Okay, for the next section here, remember we had a little string in here before. This antenna is really huge, guys. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's a monster antenna. Okay, so now I've got this all out of here. I can go ahead and cut the string since we have this section out and exposed. I want to get more of my grease. All right, with that being done, We'll slide this together, so there we go. We should be ready to roll here. So now we'll do the same thing again. We'll wrap up this with tape, but I'm not gonna make you sit here and watch that. We'll come back when that's all done. All right, guys, with the uh, antenna being built now and assembled, it's time to do some camouflage. So I went down to uh, Home Depot and I picked up four or five different uh, types of uh, paint, all in the same brand. Uh, so I got over here, I got a camouflage beige, a camouflage green, a flat black, a, uh, it says here, weathered wood look, so I kind of make it look like branches, and I got another flat black uh, protective enamel here. All right, so I waited for a better day to come out and uh, get this thing painted. Got a nice blue sky, partly cloudy. It's cool out, not too cold. I should really get this thing painted up pretty good. We're going to do a black coat first, and then I'll go back and do the camouflage after that. So stick around. So the uh, black coat is paint is on now and I'm not going too heavy with it because I'm going to put another coats of paint on it. We're going to let this dry for about 15, 20 minutes. And we'll come back with the other colors and just randomly spray them. I'll probably keep away. I'll, I'll find a different, a right uh, angle to put them at. But um, we're going to get the uh, different colors put on there just to kind of break up the pattern a little bit and camouflage it. So stick around. All right, so as you guys can see here, I kind of went all slapdash with, like I said, I was doing random sprays, trying to make it look light and dark, keeping some of the black, some of the dark gray, some of the green, some of that weathered wood look, and I went back a little bit of beige to add like flecks of sunlight into the uh, actual antenna painting. So I think this looks pretty good. It's actually fooling me. I don't know, the camera might not do it just, but it looks like there's shades of, of sunlight hitting it and uh, shade from other trees, but it's actually just the paint. So I'm pretty happy with how that came out. So we're gonna let this dry, 
We'll get the uh, thing untaped, get the uh, extensions on, and we're going to put it up in the air. Stay tuned. Okay, so I got the elements onto the antenna, and they take a 5 16 wrench to tighten these down onto the antenna here. And we'll get this thing mounted to the, uh, the pole. And I'm going to try and attempt to put this thing up by myself and get it up, uh, back up and running. Okay, so now we're at the point where we're going to attach the coax to the antenna, get the antenna mounted to the pole, and get the pole up in the air and mount it to the roof. So what I'm going to do here first is we're going to unscrew this. We'll grab our cable. Take off our protective cap. Run our cable through, that nice and tight. Get a little bit of this coax wrap again. And our wrap, gotta get a good grip on it. It's gotta stick to itself. All right, there we go. So I'm going to wrap the cable. I'm also going to wrap the outside of the uh, cover that goes onto the antenna. Not that I don't trust them, but I don't. Now that's taken care of. Bring this back up. Get this put on. Some electrical tape around it first. Remember, overlap by 50%, like so. I'm going to go back up one more time. I'm putting a decent amount of tension on this just to get it where I want it. That's probably overkill. I just want to make sure I'm getting a good wrap on everything. Just like we did earlier with the other parts of the antenna. Make sure everything is sealed up. So no water contamination gets into my antenna, thus screwing up my transmissions. So I think that's pretty good. Get these all tightened down. I'm take zip ties like we did last time. A bunch here. Just as added security. I don't really rely on zip ties to hold something up, and in a high wind situation, these things would be less than useless. Before we put this thing up, we assembled it, got it painted, got it camouflage painted, took down the old one, got their radials on, got it fastened and attached, it's nice and tight on here now, got a coax wrap to protect it from moisture, both inside and on the outside, which is good, this thing's not as deep as the other one was, and I think it's time to get this thing up in the air. That ought to be fun. And down. And just go ahead for reference. Get a shot of how big this thing is. This is a 17 foot tall antenna.
Okay, so we've got the antenna installed now. I'm gonna go and reroute the cable back to where it belongs to get it all reattached up where it needs to be on the, on the roof. We're gonna go back in the shack and I'm gonna show you that new radio that I got and we're gonna give this, this antenna a test. So stay tuned. All right, guys, I wanted to show you real quick. This is the Yaesu FT2980, and this is that 80-watt single-band VHF transceiver that I was telling you about earlier in the video. Very simple operation. You got your volume knob here, your squelch is here. This, you can change your frequencies, or your, your, pre, your memories from here, or change it for uh, your VFO knob. You got a couple little buttons down here, really simple menu system. You just hold down the menu. And that allows you to roll through the 59 different menu settings there are on this. And you just hold it down again to get back to your regular station. If you want to go into the uh, weather channels on the thing, you hit the P4 button. And that brings up, that brings up the uh, weather channel, which you have six weather channels on here to choose from. Then you hit the P4 button again to bring it out of that weather channel mode. So you're back onto your regular mode. Now I've got this set up for my repeater. We'll do a radio check here in just a second. But I wanted to go through a couple little things here. You can see this massive heat sink on here. It's like this much radio and the rest of this is all heat sink. This thing weighs about, oh, probably about four, four and a half pounds, but it's a very solid radio. The speaker is on the bottom, which is why I had these little rubber feet on here. I'm not using the actual mobile mount for it but that allows the speaker to bounce off whatever surface you got it on so you can hear it better. But massive heat sink, 80 watts of power with no cooling fan needed. It's got a nice loud three watt audio output for noisy environments. Has a six digit backlit LCD, uh, alphanumeric channel display, 200 memory channels for, you can know, you put 200 memory channels in here. Uh, CTCSS and DSS encode and decode is built in. Versatile scanning capabilities. Uh, weather channels with severe weather alert, smart search operation, which you have to go into the manual and read about that a little bit, uh, DTMF direct access microphone included, wide and narrow deviation selection. Of course, you got your squelch on here. Um, the, the menu on this is not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Uh, for as the simple operation that this thing is for, it's going to work out really fine for you. Um, let's see, four level display dimmer. I've got a set up on, on the third brightest right now. And on receive, it's 136 to 174 megahertz. And on transmit, it's 144 to 148 megahertz. Uh, your output power is you can change your output power. And it's from 80 watts, 30 watts, 10 watts, and 5 watts. And the dimensions on this are about 6.3 inches by 2 inches by 7.3 inches. Uh, I guess 7.3 inches uh, deep, 6.3 inches wide, and 2 inches tall. Uh, it does come with Yesu's three-year warranty. And like I said, this is a solid radio. If you're not doing 440, you're just doing two meters, uh, this is a killer radio. And HRO, Gigaparts, and DX Engineering all have this right now for 169 So if you want to pick up just a decent little radio, either whether you're going to use it as a mobile radio in your truck or vehicle, or use it as a little base station VHF radio like I've got it here, this is what I've got hooked up to the Comet right now. And it comes in great. I'll let you hear some of the sound here. Well, it was broken, man. I, I didn't have any way to call. 911. I finally got a series of call 911 by yelling across so, the a little conversation. I want to get on their personal business. But uh, yeah, so very simple little radio to operate. You have different levels of power. Like I said, I've got to set on low right now because the repeater is less than two or three miles from my house. But if I'm doing simplex, if I pop it over my simplex channel, if I'm on here, I'll actually change the... I'll change it to a high, uh, to the 80 watts for that. And then I can go on and try to try to reach somebody on there. But for normal, just normal use on the repeater, um, I find that it works just fine, just like it is. Kilo India 5, November Papa Lima, radio check. K5 BPC, this is KI5 MPL. Uh, how does my audio sound? Uh, sounds pretty good. Awesome. I'm uh, testing out a Yesu FT2980 on a brand new 
Comet GP9 antenna. The GP9 is a great antenna. Uh, that'll be what I put up next. Uh, do you have a, a mic gain on that uh, on that radio? I mean, your audio is okay. It's not. Uh, it could be just a little bit hotter. Yeah, I probably need to play with the settings a little bit, uh, but I mean, I just want to make sure that I'm getting a decent signal. I know my SWR is really low, so I'll check it out and see. You're full quieting in the repeater, and uh, just, uh, just you know, you might want to, if there is just a way you can up the mic gain just a little bit or get into the mic a little bit more, but it sounds great. So in conclusion, this is a really cool little radio. I've got one. That I'm borrowing at the moment. I'm probably going to go out and buy one. I wanted to try it first. And I'm bringing it to you because some of you might be looking for a simple solution. If you're just a tech and you want to stick with VHF and just you know handle your local bands and stuff, this is a cool little radio. It's built like a tank. I mean, like I said, this thing's all, it's all heat sink. The whole thing is just one massive heat sink with a little bit of radio <laughs> stuck in it somewhere. So it's a really cool little rig to have. Anyway, uh, so that's my, uh, that's my spiel on that. We're going to go back up to the studio and wrap this up. All right, guys. So that is the uh, Comet GP9 build. And I, I want to introduce that little Yaesu 2980 radio. Uh, they both seem to work really well. I'm very happy with the purchase of the antenna. And I can't wait to really uh, get out there and use it. I'm sorry I did not get on Simplex. The uh, people I wanted to talk to on Simplex are probably still at work. So I didn't get a chance to go on there and try that out yet. But I'm pretty sure it's going to be a pretty, uh, pretty awesome little setup for me there. Uh, like I said, if you go over to Gigaparts or HRO or DX Engineering, they've all got this radio, 169.95, killer little radio. It's an absolute tank, and if you have an opportunity to get one, I'd suggest getting one. Uh, if you're into the two meter stuff and you do like local things like I do around around your uh, local club, uh, it's a cool little radio to have. Yeah, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles that I usually like in radios, but you know what? It's simple. I mean, you can. You can run this thing over with a car. I swear to God, you can run this thing over the car, and it's not going to screw it up. Um, very solid built radio, so I'm pretty happy with that. Anyway, guys, uh, sorry for the long video, but I wanted to give you guys the details in this, and show you the stuff with this uh, antenna to show you how big it was. And you know, it, it's it's one thing to talk about something being 16 feet nine inches; it's a whole other thing to see it. Uh, so uh, I hope that you guys got a better understanding of this if you're looking for a decent antenna something that can really reach out and touch someone i mean the, the diamond x30 is a great antenna don't get me wrong that's a great antenna and i used it for uh, quite a few years since i got my license or well a year since i got my license <laughs> uh and it's been fine but doing simplex in the way that i'm do i'm utilizing it right now i needed something with more guts and more power to it and the gp9 is what delivered that uh, I picked it up. I think I got it at HRO, two hundred and fourteen dollars or something like that. It wasn't wasn't too bad, uh, but I don't want to have to buy antennas over and over and over again. So I wanted to spend a little bit of money on something good. This came highly recommended from multiple people. I did a lot of research on it, and I like it. So I hope maybe this will help one of you guys out, and you will make a decision on whether you want to get one or not. Or you know, I mean, like I said, the diamond antennas are great, but if you want something a little bit bigger, a little more oomph, GP9 is the way to go. So. If you like the video, guys, give me a thumbs up. It helps the YouTube algorithm show my video to more people that are interested in ham radio. And don't forget to click that subscribe and click on the little bell so you can be notified when I do new videos. Until next time, guys, I appreciate you watching. I always appreciate my patrons, and, and your, your time is valuable to me. So I want to bring you guys value. But until then, guys, this is Ham Radio for Non-Techies, and we are clear.